Well, it's Advent, and that means it's time to get ready for Christmas. Uh, we've got four weeks to get ready for Christmas here, and you probably have all sorts of things that you have to do to get ready. Maybe that's uh, putting up a Christmas tree or decorating. Maybe it's listening to some music or something and getting yourself in the mood. Uh, some people have an Advent calendar, and that is a, a little calendar that has these little doors on it. And you open it up, and it might have something inside, like maybe a chocolate, for every single day of Advent. So for the 25 days there, you would every day open one up and eat that chocolate. Well, somebody had posted up on Instagram or on Facebook that uh, their Advent calendar says that there's only two days left until Christmas, or at least that's how many chocolates were left in their Advent calendar. Well, whether you've eaten all your chocolates already, we've got four weeks here to get ready for Christmas. And in Advent, we talk about what we believe, what we believe about Jesus and his coming at Christmas time, the first Advent. And then we also talk a little bit, too, about the second Advent, when Jesus will return again. So we come and we remember that Jesus has come, but that Jesus is also coming back again. And we think, what does that mean for us that Jesus came at that first Christmas? And what does it mean for others? And then the fact that Jesus is going to come back again, what does that mean for us today? And what does that mean for others as well? What do these two things say? What is the, the message, the truth of the two Advents? So we're coming to a passage here at the end of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. And we read about the, the second coming here. So starting from Matthew 24, verses 27 through 31 says, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his elect from four winds, and one end of the heaven from one end of the heavens to the other. And then we'll skip to verse 36. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had not known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Well, the message here, as we look at the, the first and the second Advent, uh, it's similar, um, but there's also a great difference. So we're going to kind of compare the two here. So the first thing I want you to see is how they're different in perception. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, uh, after, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi, that's, we know them as the, the three kings, uh, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And then we look at what Jesus said here this morning in verse 27 of Matthew 24. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So we see there, too, the, the lights appearing in the sky. Sounds similar, but the first time Jesus came, he was a Jewish baby. 
The second time Jesus comes, he will be a Jewish warrior. The first time they asked, the second time you won't have to ask. It will be obvious. It won't be secret. It'll be very clear. There's an old story of a king who had a little boy, and he was one year old. He was the prince, and uh, the king called all his, his servants, all his nobles from the kingdom there, and he wanted them to, to swear allegiance to his little baby, one-year-old son there. And they refused. They thought, I'm not going to swear my allegiance to a, a little baby there. He's just a little boy. And the king said, he's little, but he'll grow. Well, the first time Jesus came, he was a little baby. People had to ask if he was the one. Uh, the second time he'll come, he'll come like, like lightning flashing in the sky. And nobody will need to ask the question. It will be ever so clear to everyone. The reality of, of who he is will be obvious. So the first and the second advent, they're, they're different in perception. Um, they're also different in purpose. In John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. That's what we're celebrating at Christmas. We're celebrating grace. That we didn't earn this or deserve this gift, then it wouldn't be a gift. It's out of God's goodness, out of God's willingness to, to change our hearts, to see us transformed, that he in his grace sent Jesus. Uh, some people ha have used the, the letters there of grace to spell out here uh, God's unmerited favor to us, God's riches at Christ's expense. God uh, wanted to show his favor towards us, and we couldn't earn that, so he sends his riches at the expense of his son Jesus. We're celebrating his grace as we come to Christmas, but we're also celebrating truth, the absolute truth of Jesus Christ, that he is the Savior, the one who's come to save his people from their sins. That's what the message of Christmas is. That's the gospel, that you don't have to be lost anymore. Jesus came to save those who were lost, those who were lost in their sins. They couldn't be found on their own. They couldn't find their way back. They needed Jesus, the good shepherd, to come out and search for them and bring them back to home. Jesus came to save his people from their sins. That's the message at heart there. And then today's text in Matthew 24, verse 30, it says, At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and with great glory. You know why there was so much time between the first and the second advent? The second advent obviously has not come yet. Jesus has not returned. We don't know when that will be. And I would say that there's so much time in between so that you would have time. So that people would have time to turn their hearts to Jesus. There's a, a billboard that we passed on our way driving down to Florida last year on I-85 there. And I like it. it just said in big giant letters, don't make me come down there, God. Uh, there's a, a big difference between the first and the second advent. The first one says there's plenty of time. Get to see the message. Know what it says. Embrace Jesus. And the second one says, time's up. In the book of, of 2 Peter, the Apostle Peter, he's addressing fellow Christians who figured out that they understood that Jesus was going to be returning, and he was going to be returning really soon. And they expected that Jesus was going to be returning in their lifetime, as many people there in the first century did. And they lived their lives fully expecting that Jesus was coming back during their lifetime. And they looked around and they saw their brothers and sisters in Christ, all the other Christians, they were dying for their faith. Many of them were, were dying martyrs' deaths. And there were days and, and days and weeks and months that were passing by, 
and they had all sorts of questions. When is it going to be? When is this going to We're going through all this terrible tribulation, these terrible things that are happening here, and, and it's got to be happening soon. And Peter says to them in 2 Peter 3, verses 8 to 10, But do not forget this, this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The King James Version says, like a thief in the night. There's an old story of a couple. They had a little baby, and they wanted to go out to the movies, and they didn't have a babysitter, so they, they took their baby out in the little car seat there, and they, uh, they took the baby in with them, and they figured the baby would probably sleep through the movie, and when they got to the ticket booth, the manager said to them, you know, I have a responsibility to all the other people that are coming to watch the movie here tonight, that they can, can watch and listen in peace and see the whole movie here. And if your baby wakes up and starts to cry, I just want to let you know that you're going to have to pick that baby up and rush right out and, and leave the movie here. And, and then he said, you know, I don't want to offend you either, so I'm going to give you your money back if you have to, to leave in the middle of the movie there. So just please, just give me your word that you'll try to keep the baby quiet. And so they went into, they said yes, they went into the theater and they sat down and they started watching the movie. And about a half hour into the movie, the movie wasn't very good, the husband turns to his wife and he says, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. And she said, oh, yeah, it's really awful. And he says, pinch the baby. So, so uh, they had their out. They knew that there the baby would cry, they could walk out and they'd get their money back. And well, it's like that for us in a way, between the first and the second advent. We, in a way, have a chance to pinch the baby. We have an out. The movie's rolling and you've got a, ch a chance to, to check it out to see if it's for you and, and make that decision whether to stay or whether to bug out right away. God is a God of second chances. And I would add to that, he's a God of third chances and fourth chances. And that's what the first advent is all about. That's why Jesus came as a baby, to give you a second chance because the first chance, we blew it. Not only did our, our, our forebears, Adam and Eve, blow it for us by sinning, but then we, each one of us, all sin. So we were given, though, the chances after that, the chance to, to follow. And, and so often, so many people don't take that second chance. They don't take the, the third or the fourth chance even, uh, either. So there will be, at one point, with the second advent, though, there will be no more chances. No more time to, to investigate. No more time to decide. And, and nobody will have an out. There will be no baby there to pinch to, to see if you can make your way out there. Because the baby will be a warrior. And he'll come in judgment. And when he comes, it's too late. So be sure to check it out. Check out who Jesus is. Check out what that first advent, as I said, that gospel message. Check out what it's about. Ask the questions. I'd love for you to come and ask me more about it. What does it mean to have a relationship with Jesus? What does it mean to, to give your life to him, to make him your savior or your Lord? Um, look into these things and look into to making your decision before he comes back for the second time. Our job, if you're a Christian, if you've already put your faith in Jesus, if you've entered into that relationship with him, our job is to give others the opportunity to check it out to present the message of what Christmas really means, of what Jesus coming really means, and what grace is all about, what the cross is all about. And we might not have all the perfect answers, but that's okay. We can say, well, let's go to the Bible, or take them to somebody else that, that does understand. Um, so the first and the second advent, they're, they're different in perception and different in purpose, Thirdly, they're different in preparation. 
Uh, in Luke chapter 3, verses 2 to 4, uh, 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 Mary and Joseph, they go to Bethlehem. Um, and uh, they've, gone, or they've gone there already. And, and the, the wise men have begun their journey. And we see some of the most amazing preparation for the Messiah that the world had ever seen. Uh, when Jesus was a baby, uh, but, uh, 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 not, I'm sorry, not when Jesus was a baby, but preparing for everything that Jesus' uh, birth pointed to, um, that he was the Savior, that he was the Messiah. There was so much preparation that had gone into this, both by God and all the people. They had been talking about it for, for centuries there. And, and here in Luke chapter 3, it says, uh, During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around the Jordan, pre uh, uh, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a wise one calling in the desert, pre was preparing the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. He was talking there about John the Baptist. The, the Magi, they had prepared, they had taken this long journey. Uh, Joseph and Mary had prepared as they made this journey to Bethlehem. But then John the Baptist was not just preparing for the birth, but preparing for the message, preparing for the ministry of Jesus, for the death and resurrection that Jesus would be moving to. And then in our text this morning, in Matthew 24, verse 36, it says, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And then in verse 44, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The first coming of Jesus in theological circles, like in seminary, they talk about it being the, a kairos moment. That's uh, one of the, the words we have there in Greek that talks about that, that advent or that coming of Jesus there. And it's uh, a single significant moment in, in time, a moment in history that determines the future and the destiny of all of history. That moment there with Jesus being born determined so much that would happen afterwards. And uh, it's considered there, as they say, this Kairos moment. It's kind of like a, a pregnant moment. Uh, the world was ready and the time was right. Everything had built up to it. After all these years of waiting in all the darkness, everything had built up and the time was right. The New Testament uses the word of pleroma to refer to the coming of Jesus. And uh, it, uh, um, it also talks about it as being the, the fullness of time. Um, there's, uh, so R.C. Sproul shares kind of how we can understand this, kind of illustrating with a glass of water. So say you had a glass of water and you were pouring water into it and the water fills up to the brim. That's not what this idea of play Roman is. It's where the water is just still pouring in and it's gushing over the top there. And he says what, when play Roma takes place, the water flows over the edges. The world was absolutely ripe for the coming of Christ. There was no more waiting. No more uh, expect expectations. It was all happening right then. We need to go and to, to live our lives every day like Jesus was coming back today or tomorrow. Um, because uh, when I know that he's coming back, it gives meaning to the things that he's told me to do. Um, it could happen today or tomorrow, but it also could happen in a hundred years. So I'm still going to get ready for Christmas because Jesus might come back after Advent or after Christmas. It might happen in a long time. 
Uh, there's an old story uh, about uh, Sir Ernest Shackleton. He was the guy, uh, eventually one of his journeys there, their boat sunk and they never found it there in the Antarctic as they were trying to make passage through there. But on one of his, his Antarctic ex exploration, explorations, uh, he left a group of men there, his crew, on Elephant Island. And he thought he would come back very quickly to come and get them. But he was delayed and when he went to go back, the sea around them there had frozen over. And it took him a long time to, to search around to find a passage through the, the ice and through all those uh, glaciers and everything. Everything was freezing over and he had to search and search and search. And finally, he got through and he came to them. And he knew he, he'd have to get out very quickly before where he came in through, the passage he came in, would freeze up as well, and they would be stuck. And when he arrived, to his surprise, all the men were ready. And they had everything all packed and ready to load onto the ship immediately and, and hightail it out of there. And he's asked them, how did you know that I was coming today? And they said, because our leader, every morning when we would get up, would say, men, get up, get your things together, because the boss may, may come back today. When Jesus' second advent comes, his second coming, we don't know when that's gonna be. Who knows when it's gonna be? But we live our lives like Jesus could come back today. And we live our lives like he could come back in 100 years. We don't know when he's gonna get here, but we do know that he's coming back. And when he comes, it will be a great surprise. But don't let it be a surprise to you. Get ready every day knowing that your boss may come back today. So act as if he's coming back today and act as if he's coming back in 100 years. Pray as though he's coming back today and that he's, as though he's coming back in 100 years. The message of the two Advents, as I said, what does it mean for you and what does it mean for others, for those that you are in relationship with, that you know. The message there is that you are saved by grace, that you will be saved if you put your faith in Jesus, if you've received that grace, and you won't be judged for your sins, that when Jesus returns or when he takes you home, you won't be judged because Jesus has already received that judgment for you. And hopefully, it will be the same for others, that they will understand what that message is. So I'd encourage you to be bold. Go out there and share the message of the two Advents, that Jesus has come, that he's, he's come to be the Savior of your sins, and that he's coming back one day. So make that decision to follow him, and don't let Jesus be a surprise to you or those around you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you came, not just as a baby, but you came as our king. We thank you that you are going to return one day, coming back to, to, to show how you reign as our king, to come back as the, as the warrior, as the judge. So we ask that you would use us as your ambassadors, your agents, to bring the gospel to others, that they might know you as their savior. And Lord, help us to live each and every day with that kind of pregnant expectation, knowing that you're going to be coming back again, that we would be prepared, have others prepared as well. We pray this all in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen.